On the news tonight, President Mohamedou Buhari receives certificate of return as Atiku seeks legal redress. In business, Central Bank of Nigeria injects $210 million into forex interbank market. And on the foreign scene, U.S. President Donald Trump and President Kim meet in Veteran Fall Summit. Hello there and many thanks for joining us on Super Screen's Flagship News, broadcasting to you live from Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. I am Adenike Oweye Ajiboye. The Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, has presented a certificate of return to President Mohamedou Buhari following his re-election. President Buhari was declared the winner of the election at the early hours of today after he polled a total of 50,191,847 votes to defeat his closest rival and candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, who scored 11,262,978 votes. The president-elect in his remarks said all parties involved in the elections should see the victory as a victory for Nigerians while appreciating the citizens for re-electing him as a dear president. I wish you, Mr. Chairman to congratulate all the presidential candidates and their teams on a hard-fought campaign. We may have had different views during the campaign, but the one thing most of us have in common is love of our country and our desire to improve conditions for Nigerians. From the comment of several observers, both local and foreign, it is obvious that the elections were both free and fair. Now that the elections are over and our winner declared, we must all see it as a victory for Nigeria, our dear country. That was why I encourage my team and supporters in a speech I read earlier today not to gloat. Our God given victory is enough cause for joy without dragging those who are in the opposition. <laughs> All Nigerians going forward must stand in brotherhood for a bright and fulfilling future. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubakar, has Let rejected the outcome of the February 23rd presidential election. The former vice president, who disclosed this at a press briefing held in Abuja today, said the election was not free and fair and was full of many irregularities, maintaining that he would challenge the outcome in court. As a member of the People's Democratic Party, I am speaking as a Nigerian when I say that the electoral fraud perpetrated by the Buhari administration this past Saturday cannot produce a government of the people for the simple reason that it does not reflect the will of the Nigerian people. <laughs> My dear Nigerians, it is for this reason that I, Atiku Abubakar, reject the results declared by the Independent National <laughs> Declare Muhammad Buhari as duly returned by the majority of lawful votes. Now moving on, the announcement about the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, that President Mohamedou Buhari has won the 2019 president election has been generating reactions. A cross-section of Nigerians who spoke to super screens in Kiruka, Ibe, in Shimolo area of Lagos State, expressed a varied opinions about President Buhari's victory. 
Saturday, February 24, 2019, will remain sacrosanct in the minds of Nigerians as citizens from all walks of life came out in their numbers to exercise the franchise for the presidential and national assembly elections. To bring the elections to its climax, the Independent but National Electoral Commission, INEC, announced the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as the winner, pulling 15,191,847 votes to defeat his opponent of the People's Democratic Party PDP's candidate, Atiku Abubakar, by a margin of 3.9 million. Superscreen took to the streets of Lagos to know the reactions of Nigerians on the president's re-election for another four years. At Shomolu, the residents expressed mixed feelings. We were actually looking at a Nigeria where our decision and you know should count, should matter. I saw that lots of people traveled to different places where they were registered to um, to vote because they want to make a change, they want to make a statement that we have the power, the right to say we don't want this, we want this. But it's so unfortunate that the results we're seeing, it doesn't really, really correspond with what we saw in different polling stations. So as a matter of fact, we, we, like somebody has been imposed on us. I'm very gladdened with the result of the election. It shows that Nigerians know who is really on their side. I mean the masses. Yes, we accept everything, but it's quite unfortunate because the way things are going in the country is at least a little bit bad. We can't say we are getting it right. But we need to get something right because we need to build foundation for our children. Most Nigerians want it and God has sanctioned it. <laughs> it is only to say that the incumbent, though is not perfect, but we can see some element of uh, good governance in his ways. Give it or take it, Nigeria will move forward better than before. Meanwhile, the incumbent president, Muhammad Dubari, in his acceptance speech, said he will continue in his fight against corruption, insecurity and improving on the economy. It's very, very much achievable. We know him to be somebody that has zero tolerance for corruption and he has promised to continue in that line. He has laid the foundation of the betters. I have the confident evidence on it that he will do the better. He will fight corruption for us. He just started. This next level, I hope he will do something good for the mass, especially for the pensioners. As the Nigerian presidential election of 2019 comes to an end, Nigerians look to the future for a better and improved Nigeria for all. Nkiruka Ibe, Superscreen, TV News. And our more reactions have continued to trail the victory of President Mohamedou Buhari. A cross-section of responders who spoke to Super Screen in Lagos, uh, precisely Usho, the area of the state, expressed mixed reactions about the president's victory. World alone is not enough to express what we experienced, or I as a person experienced in last administration. And uh, the most, the worst thing about the, the past administration was the killings that went to Nigeria all around. So this time, I don't know what he's going to do this time. His, his doings are very, very visible. You can see them. You can even, even at Lagos here, you know, most of the constructions, the bridges and the, the road, even even our bus terminal, you no, know, he has tried. I won't say he hasn't tried, but trust me, as a Nigerian, we are expecting more from him. In fact, it's nothing to write home about. We, we didn't re, uh, receive or get what we expected from his government. They also speak on their expectations from President Mohamedou Buhari as he assumes office again. For my own observation, I see those people voting in India in the first time, there are those that see voting in again for the second time again. So for my own observation in nation, let them go and uh, rule the country in peacefully and that, let them remember that people are feeling hunger, people are feeling hunger. Hunger is killing a lot of people in this nation. My expectation is that one, it should start with reconciliation. Let him reconcile with all Nigerians. 
this is a second chance. This is an opportunity for him now to amend for what he has done, for all the whatever that he has done. You understand me? So this time, let him carry everybody along. What he, he needs to do is to improve his administration. Because when you, when you are ruling people and they gave you the first chance and you couldn't attend to their needs, and they, they give you a, a second chance because I believe there is always a second chance in everything someone is doing. Nigerians, they are reacting to President Mohamedou victory. And now moving on, the chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP in a dual state, Dan Obe, says the All Progressives Congress, APC's leadership in the state, cannot deceive the people anymore. The PDP chairman also won the state governor, Godwin Obasaki, not to hope on winning the election in the state, insisting that a dual state belongs to the PDP. Nigerians are disappointed with INEC. Definitely is going to affect the turnout at the State House of Assembly elections. But I believe that the people should not be discouraged to the extent of not wanting to exercise their civic right to vote for those who should represent them at the State House of Assembly. On this part, the Special Advisor Media and Communication Strategy to Edo State Government, Osage Kriso, also said the party is growing in the state and that the performance at the 2019 general election is an improvement on its performance in comparison to 2015 election. If you look at the, in 2015 the way uh, APC performed in the, in the uh, House of Assembly, State House of Assembly elections, you find out that the APC did very well, you know, took most of the seats in the, in the House. And so, just the same way there's been an improvement in the president, presidential and national assembly elections, you know, in 20, 2019 compared to 2015. That's the same way you're going to see an improvement on the records that the APC set in 2015, now in 2019. So, uh, the APC is a progressive party, it moves forward, doesn't move backward. So, you find that uh, on Saturday you're going to see that the two people will come out en masse and vote massively for, for APC. And away from that, a senior advocate of Nigeria, San and spokesperson of the All Progressives Congress APC Presidential Campaign Council, Festus Kiyamo, has challenged the credibility of the River State presidential election. Kiyamo, who challenged the credibility of the election results following the announcement, said the report of the state coalition officer for the presidential election in River State is a source of concern to his party. And now to judicial matters. The appeal court has reserved judgment in two appeals filed against the federal government while the suspended Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN Awata Onogin. The court made the decision after all parties had adopted their briefs of argument. It also adjourned judgment in a third appeal challenging the ex party order given by the CCT on the strength of which Justice Onogan was suspended to a day to be announced to other parties. You recall that Justice Onogan had in the appeals challenged his trial at the CCT as well as a suspension. A federal capital territory high court in Maitama has dismissed an application by former National Security Advisor NSA Sambo Dasuki seeking an indefinite adjournment of his case before the court. Dasuki had asked the court for adjournment signed the indefinite pending when the judgment of Justice Ijoma Ojuku of a federal high court in Abuja on July 2, 2018, ordering his release is complied with by the government. A ruling on the application today, a two-member panel of the FCT High Court 
the Claudian panel held that the application was an abuse of court processes. A read on the ruling of the panel, Justice Valentin Ashi held that the three respondents in the case before Justice Ojuku were not parties to the case before the Federal Capital Territory High Court. You're still watching Super Screen's flagship news coming up in business. Central Bank of Nigeria injects $210 million into Forex interbank market. This is of these and more after this time out. Welcome back from that break and now in the business world. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has injected $210 million into the interbank foreign exchange market. The bank's director, corporate communications department, Isaac Okorafo, who disclosed this, said authorized the dealers in the wholesale segment of the market were offered $100 million while the small and medium enterprises SMEs segment received $55 million. Okorafa also reiterated the CBN's commitment to continue to boost interbank foreign exchange market to ensure liquidity in the markets. And now the Nigeria Stock Exchange and SC in conjunction with the fund managers Association of Nigeria says the Association of Stock Broken Houses of Nigeria and the Central Securities Clearance System have launched a mutual fund trading and distribution platform. NSC Head of Listing Business Division Olumide Bolu Mole, who disclosed this to journalists in Lagos State, said they are delighted to provide a solution that will enhance visibility for the listed mutual funds and promote financial inclusion. According to Bulmole, it reinforces commitment to providing market professionals, issuers, fund managers and investors with a reliable, efficient and adaptable exchange hub in Africa to save and to access capital. Still talking business news, the banking sector has recorded a total amount of 8.17 trillion naira as non-performing loans in the 2018 fiscal period. According to reports obtained from the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, the banking sector's 8.17 trillion naira NPLs for 2018 was a 1.38 trillion naira lower when compared to the 9 0.54 trillion are recorded in the 2017 fiscal period. Further analysis showed that out of the 15.83 trillion euro credits granted by banks to the economy in the first quarter of 2018, about 2.18 trillion euro became non-performing in the second quarter. The banking sector also provided a total credit of 15.58 trillion euro, out of which a 1.93 trillion euro was classified as non-performing loans for the third quarter. A total credit of 15.86 trillion euro was given by banks to the private sector, out of which 2.24 trillion euro turned out to be non-performing loans. In the fourth quarter of last year, the sum of 15.35 trillion euro was provided as credit to the private sector, and out of this amount, about 1.79 trillion euro was recorded as non-performing loans. And now coming up on the foreign scene. United States President Trump and President Kim meet in Vietnam for a summit. The details of this and more after this time.